Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge C2100. Specifically, we're gonna go over the RAM and CPUs inside. Let's get rolling. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge C2100. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. Uh, first things first, there's a couple different types of chassis for this. You can get a 12 bay large form factor, which is what this is right here, or you can get a 24 bay small form factor. Both options are hot swap. As far as the uh, CPUs are concerned, there are two CPUs inside. It's an LGA 1366 socket, which means you can use Intel Xeon, 5500 or 5600 series. People ask us all the time, hey, what CPUs do you recommend? Really, there's a number of really different, um, a good different CPUs. Uh, you can get some good hex cores. Um, I like to use uh, the X5650, uh, the X5660, X5670. All those are really, really good price points. They're a good bang for your buck. Um, you can go up higher and get X5690 or something like that. Uh, if you want something that's uh, lower power, you can get like the L5645. I mean, there's a really are a bunch of good options for this and all those are really pretty cheap so you can get two of them inside and get 12 cores for I mean next to nothing really so uh, that's one of the things I recommend for the CPUs as far as the RAM is concerned uh, there are 18 dim slots inside it uses DDR3 memory there's a number of different speeds you can use you can use 1066 1333 or 1600 I will note the 1600 will clock back down to 1333 so if you're wondering can I you know why can't I get up to 1600 it just it's not supported uh, in the sense of it won't actually go 1600 it'll clock back down. It's supported in the sense that you can use it, but just know it will clock down to 1333. Uh, as far as the different sizes you can use, you can use a 2 gig, a 4 gig, an 8 gig, a 16 gig, or all the way up to a 32 gig. No, unfortunately, you cannot use 64 gig, which brings us to what type of RAM does this machine accept? ECC registered, also known as an RDIM. No, unfortunately, you cannot use LR DIMMs. Uh, this is part of Dell's 11th generation, and the 11th generation does not accept LR DIMMs. The 12th gen is when you can start using LR DIMMs, so you need ECC registered R DIMMs. So just make sure that's what you're getting. So that means you can max out 384 gigabytes using 12 32 gigs, which brings us to a really, really interesting question. Why can I only put in 12 32 gigs when there's 18 DIMM slots? Well, that's what's known as the rank rule. And before we get into all that, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear, I'm gonna pop this open, and I'm gonna show you all the, uh, the details inside about the rank rule and the different channels. I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine and prevent it from electrostatic discharge. Uh, first things first, you just need to make sure you have the screw out. You're gonna push this down. You're gonna pop it back and you're just gonna lift it straight up. You can see I kind of cheated and already had it open because it's kind of a pain to get the top off on this one. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty, pretty difficult sometimes. It gets a little bit stuck as I pull the whole table trying to... <laughs> All right, so as we have discussed, the machine itself has two CPUs and uh, 18 DIMM slots. Uh, it is covered up here by the air baffle and unfortunately because this is a, a little bit of an older model, you can't just directly pull the air baffle off like you can with some of the um, machines nowadays. So you're actually going to need to get out your trusty Phillips head, okay? So what we're gonna do is need to remove four screws. There's gonna be two on the side over here. So, and I always rec recommend a magnetic tip if you don't have one, just because it makes it a lot easier so you don't lose any screws. So there's screw one, and we're gonna come over here and do screw two. And then there's two screws on the top right by these very large fans. And we're going to remove these screws as well. Okay, so now that we have removed the four screws and we've put them to the side over here, we can put our Phillips head down this will come out all together as one piece. There's actually four more screws, these two right here and two on the side, that will keep this cage right here attached to the plastic air baffle. So what you're gonna wanna do is lift this straight up and you do need to be careful because there are a ton of cables over here that are in the way. Um, so you just need to be a little bit careful pulling it up and it does get stuck very easily. So over here we just have to watch out for the cables, all right? And voila, we are in. So, uh, as we discussed, there are two CPUs. CPU 1 
and CPU 0. CPU 1 controls the 9 DIMM slots over here, and CPU 0 controls the 9 DIMM slots over here. You did hear that correct. It is CPU 1 and CPU, CPU 0 as, a, as opposed to CPU 1 and CPU 2 like you'd normally hear. Uh, with CPU 1, there are three memory channels, and there are three DIMMs per channel. And with CPU 2, it's the exact same as well. But what is important about this is what we had uh, discussed a little bit earlier is the rank rule. And the rank rule basically states that per memory channel, you can only have a total of eight ranks, okay? And this is very important because all 32 gig memory is quad rank. So we'll do some quick math here, and if you were to put in uh, three of quad rank modules into uh, one memory channel, that'll get you to 12 ranks. You can only put in eight ranks. So you've gone over, and it will not work. So that means you can only put in two quad rank DIMMs per channel, which is why you can only install 12 32 gigs. Now, if you were using dual rank, like a dual rank 8 gig or 16 gig, you can load all 18 up and you don't have to worry about any of the stuff that we're saying right now. It is specifically with quad, with quad rank and all 32 gigs are quad rank for DDR3. Okay, so this is very, very important because you will run into the rank rule with this machine. All right, so now uh, let's go over how you would install them because not everybody is going to max out their machine. A lot of people only want to put in, you know, six memory modules or 12 memory modules, like six, six 16 gigs or, you know, 12 8 gigs or something like this. And uh, this is, you know, very normal, very standard. So if you're going to do that, you want to know, hey, well, where do, I, where do I install the modules? Well, this is what you want to do. You want to install your modules, at least start at the blue slot. The blue slot is the start of the memory channel. So right here, this blue slot right here is A0. Then you come over here to the next blue slot, and that is B0. And you come over here to the next one, and that is C0. Okay, so this is very, very important because let's just say you were only putting in six. You would want to put them in all six of the blue slots. Okay, now you come back over here, and you're going to have D0, E0, and F0. So uh, that's the way it goes. And then as far as afterwards, it's pretty simple. Then you have, so this is A0, this is A1, and this is A2, this is B1, this is B2, this is C1, this is C2, okay? Uh, so let's go over a couple of tricks I like to, to do before we install the modules. Uh, personally, I like to make sure all of our DIMM slots are wide open. This just makes things uh, a little bit easier when I am trying to install the modules. It's not like something you have to do, but my goal is to protect the machine and to protect the parts. So I want to make things as easy as possible for me. So when I'm going to install them, if it takes an extra second, I'm going to do it just to make sure that things go smoothly. The next thing I want to talk about is there is a slot right here in the middle of this notch is known as a key. This key is very important because that key is not perfectly centered. So if you go to install this module and you install it uh, the wrong way, you could actually damage the leads and break the module, or you could damage the dim slot, which would mean that potentially the whole dim slot is bad, potentially the whole channel could be bad, and that means you might have to replace the whole motherboard. None of these are a problem that you want to uh, create by just a simple user error. So one of the things I always just state is to be real careful when you're installing just to make sure you have it lined up properly because, for instance, you get in a good groove, CPU 1 is facing this way, and then it flips over here at CPU 0, and you need to go like that. And it's real easy just to be in a good groove. You're loading, you're loading them, and you come to do it over here and you realize, oh man, I, I have it the wrong way. Um, so these are just simple common user errors. Another thing I like to point out when you install the module, okay, so we have it faced the right way, we've put it in, it, it feels like it's in, it feels like it's, it's inserted, however, it's really not fully inserted, uh, so if I were to try to boot up the machine, it would not register this module, and someone might think that they have a bad DIMM, which is also a very common user error, and it's not a bad DIMM at all, it's just not properly seated. So what you want to do is hear these two clicks. So those two clicks let you know that the module is fully inserted, and you'll also notice when you look at the tabs, these tabs are sticking way further out compared to the tab for the module that's inserted, okay? Um, so that's a, a way that I like to check at the end just to make sure that I have fully inserted everything uh, and that there's not a, an error. And actually right there, I was about to install it and I had it facing the wrong way because I'm sitting here talking. So again, just pay attention, make sure you have it installed uh, the right way. And so you'll notice I am right now putting them in all the blue slots, okay? Because like I said, not everyone at home is maxing this out, even though we're about to max this out. Um, so this would be the way, these would be the first three uh, channels and the start of the channels. So this would be the proper way at home to install it. And again, over here, it has flip-flops. So this is actually D0 right here. 
and then we're going to do E0 and F0, okay? So it's, honestly, this is really simple, and I tell people all the time, if you're at home and you're, you know, wondering, like, hey, this is a home lab server, and, you know, I'm trying to figure out if this is something I can install, yes, this is one of the easiest upgrades to do. Uh, it's not hard at all. You don't have to be a, a true technician. You just need to watch videos like this uh, and make sure that you're just doing it uh, carefully and properly. So, okay, now I've installed six, and this is one of the things I do recommend as well. Um, because there are six memory channels, I am a fan of making sure all the memory channels are even and balanced. Uh, this is how you maximize overall performance. This is why we spread them across all the channels as opposed to just throwing them in the first six slots is because you want to maximize your over, overall performance and have all six channels working for you as opposed to just two or three, right? So when we do this, uh, one of the things that is um, important to me and important to the company that we do here is we will sell uh, sell DIMMs in sets of six or 12. Uh, six, 12, or 18, if you're gonna, gonna put in like 18, uh, 16 gigs or 18, eight gigs, uh, because we want to have that even balance. Um, so if you're at home and, and you're looking to do upgrades, that's one of the things I recommend is to order in sets of 6, 12, or 8, basically sets of 6, or 6, 12, or 18, I should say, sex, sets of 6, so that way it is uh, completely even on all the channels and everything is uh, perfectly replicated. So I'm going to go ahead and install these last six DIMMs, and we're going to fast forward and be right back. All right, now that we have installed 12 DIMMs, we've completely maxed out our Dell C2100. Uh, we've got 384 gigabytes in here. This thing's gonna be humming. It's gonna be at its maximum performance. We actually installed uh, two hex core procs as well before this video to make it basically as fast as it's gonna be possibly able to go. Um, and the other thing I recommend if you're at home and you're just wanting to increase the overall speed, throw some SSDs in. SSDs always make things a little bit faster as well. And that's one of the, one of the things I always tell people in general. You know, uh, this is an older machine. Um, doesn't mean it's a bad machine by any means, there's a lot of technology that's older that's still a really amazing great technology that can get a lot of great applications done it doesn't have to be the latest and the greatest and it can still do really really good things uh, but if you're looking to put a band-aid and preserve the life of your c2100 for you know another few years and, and continue to use it for you know maybe it's your your work server or you want to play with it as a home lab or gaming server or whatever the case may be you, you know Upgrading the RAM. That's why I recommend to people. That'll be the best boost for your, your performance as far as just bang for your buck. Upgrade the RAM. That, that's going to get you what you want. Um, that's going to preserve the life and, and just get you a few more years out of this bad boy here. So, all right. Um, now that we have in, uh, installed all the RAM, we're going to go ahead and put this back together. So one of the things I want to note, when we put this back, you'll notice right here this plastic notch. That's probably the hardest part is just making sure over here you don't accidentally uh, clip these cables or do anything bad. Uh, so you just want to line this up right here properly. And I personally like to kind of hold the cables back just because it makes it a little bit easier when I go to set it down that they are not in the way. All right. And then we're just going to drop these four screws back in which I'll uh, go ahead and fast forward, but we're gonna knock these four out and uh, and put the top back on and realistically we're done. So if you made it this far, hey, do us a favor, click that like, smash that subscribe, and if you're looking to upgrade your C2100, please give us a chance to quote you at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. We would sure love to help you out and show you all the different RAM that we have because we have everything under the sun for this machine from uh, four gigs all the way up to 32 gigs so if this is something that um, that you're looking to upgrade in your data center uh, please email us and give us an opportunity to quote hey thanks for stopping by and have a wonderful day